All right. I want you to open your Bibles, please, this morning to the book of James, chapter 1. I got two openings for you, actually. James, chapter 1, <clears throat> and also the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. James, chapter 1, and Proverbs, chapter 1. And we'll, we'll begin in the book of James. And I want to speak to you a few moments today about practical wisdom in profound times. Practical wisdom in profound times. If there's anything that seems to be, and it's, it's not, I'm going to make a little play on words here. It's not literally in short supply. You know, it, it's really irksome to hear people talk about there's a shortage of this and a shortage of that. You know, by definition, there is no shortage. What it is, is you, you, you've got a supply chain issue. Come on, come on. Lord, There's no shortage. We serve a God identified as El Shaddai. Amen. And the, listen, the, the transliteration of that is he is the God who is more than enough. So listen to me. If he's the God who's more than enough, how's he going to come short come on, come on. Lord. with all of these billions of people on the face of the earth? It's not that there's a shortage of anything. Amen. There's a supply chain issue. I can take you to different places in the world and you say, man, these folks are short this and short that and short the other. But it's not exactly a shortage as you would want to define a shortage as much it is the logistics of getting a supply chain in there because there's more than enough. You know, folks say, well, we're running out of shrimp. We're running out of this kind of fish. Are you kidding me? Has anybody in here ever been on an ocean cruise? Amen. Have you gotten far enough out to the ocean after you leave the dock to nothing? Look, you do just like when Abraham came in and God said, I want you to look to the north and the south and the east and the west. And God said, just look all around you. We say, oh my goodness. I've been out there in the middle of the ocean and there's nothing but ocean. And you, when you're on, in, on the boat, and you're actually cruising on the surface of the water. All you really see is what appears to you to be this endless, flat carpet of water. Amen. Amen. But now stop and use your imagination moment. How deep is that water? Come on. Amen. For how many miles? How do you calculate the number of gallons? And to be honest with you, that, <laughs> that metric is probably like a thimble compared to the, all the oceans and the seas of the world. Amen. How do you calculate the, uh, this, the volume Lord. of water Lord. on the planet? Most of it is water. Amen. And I can assure you that most of it contains active, living, aquatic sea life. Amen. I got good news for you. You like tuna, you're not going to run out of it. Amen. You like ma'i, they're swimming every day. Yeah. You like crab legs? They're crawling all over the place. Let me tell you, they're not running out of anything. Amen. 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 Jesus gave us a promise. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He's not coming short on that promise. So you say, well, what is this all about? Deception. And this is the reason why we need practical wisdom in profound times. Because I'm telling you, the enemy knows his time is short. He's pulling out all the stops to defeat, deflate, and demotivate the people of God. Because often we are sadly impressed by what we see and what we feel and what we think, among other things. Amen? Amen. So, I ask you to open up the book of James because a part of this teaching in dealing with practical wisdom for profound times has to do with avoiding deception as well. In James chapter 1 and verse 5, it says this, if any of you lack wisdom. See, you could have, you may be experiencing a personal lack of something, but that does not mean there is not an abundant supply Amen. Yes. to remediate your lack. Amen. All right? If any of you lack wisdom, here's, here's the, he says, here's, goes to the source. Let him ask of God. God. This absolutely says God is the source of not just any wisdom, but godly wisdom. 
Let him ask of God that giveth to all men. No exceptions. Right. Liberally. Yeah. In other words, God is not just going to sprinkle a little wisdom. You ask him for it, he says he's willing and more than willing to give it out liberally. Amen. That, that is a quantitative uh, word. Liberally, mean as opposed to scarcely. Right. All right? So he has more than enough to dispense to you. And it's yours for the asking. And he upbraideth not. In other words, God will never put you down for coming to him to ask him for help. Amen. And it shall be given him. Now, that's awesome. So the whole package here, God says, look, I've got it. I've got more than enough for you. I am not going to criticize you for coming to me because you have discovered a lack of it in your life. And obviously, if you discover a lack, it's evidentiary, yeah. meaning you, there are signs or uh, signals or yeah metrics that let you know, man, I need a little bit more here in this area. Amen. You know, when your children are in school and you know, good teachers know when, where children's effort quotients are. And it's not always that your child cannot comprehend the work necessarily. They might need a little tutorial. They might need a few little keys and clues that they can learn. I remember learning the metric system, man, it was tough on me. It, it was tough, but I had a good science teacher who was able to help me break it down like money, you know, to, to be able to determine the difference between grams and kilograms and milligrams and so forth and so on. She said, well, just pretend these are denominations in, in bills and money. And so many of these make so many of those. Uh, click. Amen. The lights went on. Amen. It, it was not necessarily, listen, I didn't have the understanding. And in all you're getting, you need to get understanding. Amen. Let's take a look at another passage here. I want you to go to, I know I told you to open up Proverbs 1, and we will get there. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. And it says here in verse 5, get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Wisdom is portrayed in the feminine gender in Scripture and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. Then, I want you to go over to Proverbs chapter 23. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 23. This is your greatest stock tip from the kingdom. It says here, buy the truth and sell it not. There should never be a sell-off of godly wisdom out of your life. Amen. And yet people do it all the time. The devil has all kind of brokerage people. I'm not talking about the ones on Wall Street. I'm talking about the ones on your street. Amen. Yeah. These brokerage uh, agents working on behalf of the kingdom of darkness are always trying to get you to sell off godly wisdom. But the Bible says to you, don't do it. It says, buy the truth. Pay the price for it, whatever it is, and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. You need all these components. Amen. Right. Buy the truth, sell it not. Also, in other words, it's saying pay the price to obtain these other components. Amen. Because put together, they create quite a formidable uh, covering for yourself. So it says, now, buy the truth and sell it not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Now, whether you realize it or not, you do this more often than you think. You got a plumbing problem at home, and you don't know the first thing about plumbing. You get on the telephone, and what do you do? You call a plumber. Amen. And what are you doing when he gets there? Well, you know, you're going to have to pay him because you sure don't know how to do it. Now, some of you might be amateur plumbers, amateur electricians and things like that. But I tell you what, depending on the, the nature of the challenge you're facing, you better not be too amateuristic. Okay, you can't go out there fooling around in that circuit box and you don't know what wire is what and this and that. Amen. So what do you do? You buy it. Think about it that way. When you call these various appliance vendors and fix-it people and things like that or handymen, you are literally purchasing wisdom, instruction, and understanding. You're buying theirs. You're wise because you're wise enough to figure out, you know what, I don't have this, but there's a way that I can obtain it. Amen. 
And it's a wise move for you to do that. It, this is not rocket science. Now, for some, they may say, well, that's just, that's just too simple, Pastor. I need something a little deeper than that. No, you don't. And I want to tell you something. You can, you can operate through these things in many, many areas. Uh, it's wonderful. We all have an average number of abilities around about 750 different abilities. But that's the comprehensive human dynamic. But it doesn't mean you have every ability that there is. And so where you lack, like if you have to hire a lawyer, why? Because you don't know how to deal with contracts and business and so forth and so on. So you purchase, if you would please, the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge of an attorney. And they only give you a fractionary part of it. Amen. They don't tell you everything. They give you what you need. Amen. 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 And I reckon if you need more, you pay more. There's a price to be paid. Now, as far as God is concerned, see, that's, that's the wonderful thing about him because you go to him when he says, you know, if any man lack wisdom, let him come and ask of me, ask of God who give unto men, all men liberally and upbraideth not. Well, what he's saying is, listen, uh, I have more than enough to give you, but there's only so much you need. I'm thinking about also the manifestations of the Spirit, 1 yeah. Corinthians chapter 12, Amen. the word of wisdom. Yeah. It doesn't say all of God's wisdom. One of the manifestations of the Spirit is the word of wisdom, a fractionary dispensing of God, literally revealing to you the will and the purpose of God. He's not going to just reveal to you the entire will, as it were, in a way that you could contain it. Amen. But he can give it to you here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, amen. 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 Line upon line, precept upon precept. He can supply you with what you need. And so it's steps and stages, and God can get you from where you begin to the place that he wants you to go. So this is very, very important. So these are some really important passages here for us to bear in mind. We're looking at a world right now in which it seems, man, wisdom is, well, godly wisdom is in sh not short supply, but it's in short supply in some folks' heads. That's Let's put it Amen. that way. <laughs> Amen. All right. So now, I want you to go back here to Proverbs chapter 1, talking about practical wisdom in profound times. And let's begin reading chapter 1, Proverbs, verse 1. I'm going to read from King James here. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, so here's the author of the, the book written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Let's back up here and go back down through that. What is the purpose of this writing? To know wisdom. If everybody knew it, they'd have it. Amen. Right. So the purpose of these writings is to help people know and recognize what wisdom is Amen. and instruction. Amen. How do you use wisdom? Well, wisdom is what really instructs you Amen. to perceive the words of understanding because all words are not words that are bringing understanding to you. Amen. Some of them are bringing foolishness Amen. to you, right. grief and other confusion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. True godly wisdom will furnish you with understanding. To receive, this is very important, you have to receive what is dispensed. Amen. And see, if you don't know what it is, why would you receive it? That's right. Amen. You don't want a crate full of snakes delivered right. to your door. That's right. Amen. right? You need to be able to discern what's in the package. That's right. And that's where this all begins. Godly wisdom helps you to recognize it and identify it for what it is. Are y'all a little warm? I feel a little warm here. Let's get a little bit more air in here. All right, praise the Lord. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. These are relative metrics. Let's go over those again. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. How do you know when you have come to that metric? How do you know when justice is in place? What is the source or the origin that truly defines what justice really is, what equity really is, what righteousness really is? It's the word of God. Amen. Amen. 
The word of God is the final authority on all of these metrics. And God has a way of bearing witness with your spirit when that is achieved. When you have arrived at that true metric. You can be teachers in a classroom and you see things that are going on. How do you deal with and distinguish one child from the other to know how to manage them? Because you have an array of influences in that classroom or in any setting where there's a community of any kind, your own neighborhoods, your, your, your subdivisions where you live, where you work, where you play, you're engaged and interactive with different people. How do you handle different people? That's where the wisdom of God comes in. Amen. I learned a long time ago that you couldn't handle everybody exactly the same way. This is why wisdom is needed. Amen. said to supply subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. There are some people that under my supervisory oversight, I could just look at them and they knew what to do. Others I had to say a couple of words. Some I had to give a paragraph to. Some people needed a short story Amen. because the way, that's the way that it was. You know, I remember, I remember when my mother passed away um, and my, my siblings came up to give their various remarks. And there was one profound thing they said, and I know it was true because there were seven of us. And uh, my big sisters were saying, well, you know, mom always knew how to handle each one of us. And you know that as a mother, if you look, if you're the parents of multiple children, whatever, you know they're, they're all individual, they're different. You, and just to get rid, you handle them differently. Amen. Because they are different. Amen. They're unique. Right. And you, you have, God gives parents an ability to learn the proclivities of their children, to learn the, the ins and outs of them, what, what motivates them, what demotivates them, on and on like that. And you need that wisdom because God, it's a fluid situation. And you need godly wisdom in order to manage it in a way that brings glory to God, but also uh, develops good productive citizens for our communities. Say amen here. Amen. Amen. So, amen. Going on, so you want all of these components to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and discretion. Now notice verse 5, a wise man will hear. A wise man will hear. I, I'm a part there for just a second. I know there's more words to the verse. Let me read the verse. I'll come back and work on that clause. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Let's unpack that fifth verse. A wise man will hear because that's where it all begins. What is being said? Yeah. Who's saying it? Yeah. To whom is it being said? Amen. Yeah. A wise man will hear. You're not going to be able to know or figure out whether what you're listening to is truly godly wisdom or it's foolishness until you have a chance to hear it. Amen. So a wise man will hear. Somebody says to you, I got a great deal. It's the, it's the end of all deals. It doesn't get better than this. This is the best deal you're ever going to make. Anybody here ever heard words like that? Amen. And watch out for those signs that say you can make up to. <laughs> That's right. See, when wisdom unpacks that, you got to understand what up to means. Right. Amen. I see signs out here where they're hiring folks to work in different businesses, and they say you can earn up to $16 per hour. Well, up to begins at one cent. And the cap or the ceiling is $16. That's right. Says you can make up to. Now, there's some factors in the middle of all that. Amen. The factors are how much experience do you bring to the table? Come on. Amen. Are you going to be a real beginner, a true trainee, and know nothing, and you have to develop all the way up? Well, you're, you're somewhere in between the up to somewhere. Amen. But, but you, you may not be, th you, you're nowhere near maybe half the way to the up to. <clears throat> but when you get the time under your belt, the experience, the practice, and so forth, then you probably can get to and then eventually exceed right. the existing cap Amen. where there are opportunities to be rewarded for, you know, fruitful service and on and on. Amen. 
But the, it, 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 pardon me, it begins by you hearing. Amen. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, of course. Because if you hear it, you're going to be learning something in the process. Amen. And see, if you are oriented toward godly wisdom, you can begin to unpack and discern what it is you're hearing. Amen. There's a lot of people that are conned out here. They approach people and they play on their ignorance. They play on their lack of understanding. And a lot of it really has to do with pride. People just simply don't want you to think they don't know anything. That's what God addresses through James. When he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Amen. But you see, the foregone conclusion is let him push away his pride first. Right. Amen. So then he'll be willing to come and ask God. Amen. But a lot of it is that. I, you know, I, I'm just telling you, growing up in grade school and things like that, all we kids prided ourselves on knowing something. Not knowing, we didn't know what it was. We didn't even know. Amen. But we didn't want anybody else to know we were ignorant. And so we, we, we pretended to be smart. Amen. And it usually ended up costing us. Come on. Amen. The very thing we were attempting to avoid, scandal, shame, being laughed at, being ridiculed, being belittled, was the very fury we went into because it came out that we didn't know exactly what we were talking about. And I noticed, I learned some kids just sat back and watched and listened. And they were waiting because they wanted to see what the outcome was going to be because they already had certain preconceived notions. See, some of them were coming from homes that had taught and trained them what Proverbs is talking about teaching and training your children. Amen. So they're not quick to just plunge headlong into a situation, especially if they would learn from home, which is really the school of first instruction. Amen. The parents say, look, in fact, you're going to see here as we go further down, this passage says, if sinners entice you, don't go with them. I learned also from my mom, misery loves company. But I was getting back to that little illustration, but that's true. My siblings said mom knew how to handle every one of the kids, and we were all different. Amen. But she had the ways and the means to get us to do what she wanted us to do. And it couldn't all be done alike. Right. Now, you know, there were times where we gathered and we all had good sense enough to know, hey, we got to get on with the program here, no matter who you are or what you feel or think about this. We, we understood those things and discerned them. But she knew exactly... And this was a good thing, to how to literally draw the best out of you to get your full potential to attention and, and to move forward in your life. All right. So now, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. So what is the Bible saying? If you have not come to a place of understanding, you are at risk of being able to attain wise counsel. Amen. Someone can say anything to you, and without understanding, you might assume it to be wise counsel. And I want to tell you, when in doubt, check it out. Amen. Sound off with or on someone you know and trust to tell you the truth right. and won't attempt to fool you twice. You need good people in your life like that. By the way, God can also redirect you to them as well. Amen. I remember teaching a message in a conference about the need for godly wisdom. I was teaching in a conference addressing leaders and business leaders and so forth. And it was amazing. After the end of the session, there were business people that came up to me. I never thought about that. I said, about what? Because, see, I was speaking as a pastor and from that perspective and the fact that people need godly wisdom and these, these guys, like in business, they didn't think they needed any kind of wisdom from a spiritual side. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like all cut and dry and just line this up and just get a contractor and this, that, and the other. But they needed godly wisdom because you're dealing with folks. Amen. And everybody is not fair. Everybody is not just. Amen. Everybody doesn't line up with, you know, think on these things. Whatsoever things are honest and truthful and good report and there's virtue and praise, think on those things. Everybody doesn't think down that stream. Amen. Amen. Look at what happens behind disasters like Katrina and other phenomena like that, storms and floods and whatnot. What happens? Business people, man, that 
<laughs> you can see the dollar signs ring up in their eyes. Amen. People are desperate right. and are almost willing to do anything to put their lives back into a normal state of living. And they're willing to pay almost every price. That's the reason why. When these, in the aftermath of these things, the mayors, the governors of the states have to come along and make a decree and say, look, there will be no price gouging. Anybody that pr uh, price gouges people in their time of desperation will be prosecuted. Amen. Now, see, that's the recognition. Let's give the leaders credit. That's recognition because they're seeing judgment perverted. They're seeing equity perverted. They're seeing fairness perverted. Because in the desperation, these people are just trying to make it and so forth. And, you know, there, there are other, I guess what you would call safety nets behind that. There will be financing maybe coming from the federal government, the emergency systems and things like that. And we know it's all a process and it takes time. But in the meantime, sadly, people get grow incredibly impatient. And it's understandable. I mean, think about it. Look over there in Ukraine. You were living in an apartment building with fellow residents. And all of a sudden, a missile just comes through there and obliterates it. Wait a minute. You, you say, well, I'm down in the basement. It doesn't matter. But you see, if that thing cuts through the infrastructure in the building, you may not have any water to take a shower with anymore. Amen. Your electricity may be cut off in that entire building. Everybody's disadvantaged. Amen. All of a sudden, in just a blink of an eye, your whole life is turned upside down. You find yourself desperately running away, try, just trying to find any place safe, what, whatever you can carry for as long as you can carry. Think about entire families who had children living in those situations. See, we live here in the United States of America. No one can basically visualize anything like that happening here. And it very well may be that nothing like that ever happens here. We, we're very hopeful for that. But you know what? There are other ways and means that the enemy desires to deal with us. Amen. And he's doing it. That's right. Oh yeah, man, he's doing it. He is manipulating and maneuvering. He is pressuring. He is uh, bringing about all kinds of oppressive and depressive uh, manifestations to discourage us. Amen. And But most importantly, he wants us to question who we are. Right. Remember the Mount of Temptation and Jesus and the devil said, if you be the son of God, the devil operates according to a pattern. Amen. He's, he's not changing his stripes, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. He's still doing the same old thing, pretty much the same old way. Amen. And so he's saying, well, now, if, if, if God be God, why is all this? And I've given you that answer a thousand times because people ask me that thousands of times. Why, why is all this woe in the earth? Why are good things happening or rather, pardon me, why, why do bad things happen to good people? This, because I said, you, you, you got a leaser. That's, right. That's a crook. Amen. Okay? And uh, it's, it's just, it's bad news as far as that goes. But the good news is, the good news is, is that God came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And we tap Amen. into that. And one of the ways we do that is getting this practical wisdom for profound times as the ones we're living in. So now notice, <clears throat> the, a wise man will hear, verse 5, and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To what? To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Now, dark here does not imply necessarily evil and wickedness. It simply means the understanding or the insight you need is obscured Amen. for whatever reason from you. But God's wisdom can unpack it and unfold it to you and help you. Amen. But here's where it all begins, verse 7. The fear of the Lord. Yes. Your respect for God. Your acknowledgement of God. Your appreciation of God. Your embrace of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen. That's where knowledge begins. Right. With respecting God. Why? Because he knows all. He's all-knowing, he's all-wise, he's all-powerful, he's all that. Amen. Amen. So that's where it begins. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's also the beginning of wisdom, and it is also to hate evil. Amen. He says, <clears throat> but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They despise it. 
They despise wisdom and instruction. It goes back to that point. We didn't want anybody to think we were ignorant, so we pretended we knew what we were talking about. Amen. Or we knew what we were doing. Only to find out when we messed up, we didn't know anything. And then we had to go end up being lectured by the principal or teacher or whoever, parents. Why'd you do this? Didn't you know this? Didn't you know that? No, we didn't know that. But we didn't want anyone else to think that we didn't know it. Amen. And that's called pride. Amen. Pride got in the way, blinded us, because pride won't allow you to admit that you're wrong. My son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. This, the pandemic, this is an epidemic in these times. Amen. The absolute resistance to and refusal by our young people to do this verse right here. My son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. Now, I want you to notice the verses that came before we got to this one. These first seven verses instruct us on the need for wisdom, Amen. why this book has been provided. It literally lectures every person to say, listen, to begin with anything that's going to work in your life, it starts with God and godly wisdom. Amen. And this covers everybody. It not only covers our children or the youth or the young adults, it covers the elders, Amen. the middle agers. Yeah. Okay, it, it's covering everybody. Yeah. Because see, here's, here's the issue. How are you going to dispense what you don't have? That's, right. Amen. That's the reason why it says, now, my son, hear the instruction of your father. You, you see, those first seven verses tells you how to recognize genuine, godly instruction. Because if your daddy or your mama are telling you to lie, to cheat, to steal, to con, to trick, that's not going to do you any good. That's, right. Amen. that's going to compound an ongoing issue. Amen. Hear the instruction of your father. What's implied here is that your father has some instruction to dispense. And forsake not the law of your mother. What is implied here is that your mother is operating on laws aligned with Scripture. Amen. Yeah. Doesn't make her a legalist. That's right. It's just that there's structure there. There's order. Amen. There's, there's a pattern and principles there that she's teaching you and imparting to you in order to assure that your life goes down a set of guidelines that will get you to real, where you really want to go in life. Now, none of us is guaranteed a smooth path. Everybody runs into headwinds. Right. Amen. Jesus said so. He said, in the world you will have tribulation. Amen. Who was he talking to? Everybody. Yeah. But then he said, but be of good cheer. But see, if you don't know that, you may not respond the same way. Amen. He said, be of good cheer. Why? I've overcome the world. And he said, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But see, if you don't know that, then when the headwinds come, you're, you're ready to just be blown away. That's the reason why you got to get this word on the inside of you and keep it in there. Amen. Remember these Amen. things. My son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. How many times, how many stories are you going to read and pick up in the news where it, it, it's very simple to me. When I see a story or I see some report about somebody that did this and did that, it's obvious to me they weren't listening to anybody but the devil. Some of this stuff is an absolute, listen, nothing but the pure devil himself and demons talking to these folks' minds. And you know what? It's getting so thick now, they're even telling the law enforcement that. Well, you know this, these, de these demons were speaking to me. No, I'm telling you the truth. They arrest these folks for murder and rape and molestation and whatnot, and they ask them, well, why did you do this? They say, well, no, something got in my head. That's right. Amen. These de some of them identify them, the de these demons. Amen. You know, I'm wrestling with these demons. I I've got my demons. He's got his demons. She's got her demons. Well, they, you know, they're getting educated little by little, I reckon, but that's, that's what's going on. It's so raw out there, though. If people are finally coming to grips, but the problem is they may know their, they may know or perceive that demonic activity is oppressing them, but they don't know how to dismiss it. Amen. 
Because, see, Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, these signs shall follow them that believe. But, see, they don't know that. Amen. That's a part of wisdom, understanding, judgment, and justice that they lack. That's right. Because somebody told them, why bother to go to church? Why bother to read the Bible? Why bother to pray? And my parents don't make me go to church. Or they don't insist or encourage me to attend church or to read my Bible Amen. or to pray and seek the face of God. Amen. So I don't know these things. And so when the stuff comes, as they say, the stuff hits the fan. And when all these issues come up, and see this Proverbs addresses that also. Let's read on a little bit further here. All right. Why hear the instruction of a father and forsake not the law of your mother? For they shall be an ornament of grace unto your head and chains about your neck. Yeah. Chains about your neck is indicative of prosperity. Amen. It's indicative of increase. It's indicative of status, if you would, please. My son, verse 10, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. Now, here's the question. How can you distinguish them? That's right. Amen. How do you know what kid's a sinner and which one isn't? Come on. You know what I mean? For the practical purposes of what kid is trying to deliberately lead you into trouble with themselves? As opposed to another child that may deliberately try to get you involved in more productive activities. Can you distinguish them? Parents, do you know how to teach your children how to distinguish the difference between those two? Come on. Amen. That's what this practical wisdom in profound times is all about. And I want to, I want to tell you, adults fall into the same thing. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's, it's just incredible. And, and listen, I don't mind sharing with you because I draw, I, I enjoy learning about current events and what's going on because there's more than enough fodder out there for me to look at, to remind me how true the scripture is. Amen. To assure me and affirm that what God says in his word, that's the absolute truth. Amen. When Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, you better believe it. Amen. And yet you've got grown people out here still molesting, raping, robbing, killing, breaking and entering. And they know better. Amen. Whose work is that? So, if they say, verse 11, come with us. Now, look, these guys are so crazy. They're going to lay out the plan. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Excuse me. Has anybody seen that happening anywhere? In broad daylight. You know, once upon a time, they used to get you in a back alley where nobody was, you know, it was dark back there. Maybe one light lit up in the alley. I grew up in the urban areas of Philadelphia. Hey, there's plenty of alleys. Some of them were lit, some of them weren't. And, and we were working sometimes in the evening, then had to come home after dark. Amen. And gangs and thieves and muggers were laying in wait for a victim that they could mug and rob. I'm telling you, I'll never forget as long as I live. And this happened in broad daylight across the street from my house. And I watched two young guys. And there was an old man walking down the sidewalk. I lived on a one-way street. There was an older man walking on the sidewalk, and two gang members came. It happened so fast, ladies and gentlemen, you thought you were looking at a circus act. They had their thing to get. They, they grabbed that guy and rolled him over just like a forward head roll and reached in his pocket, grabbed everything in there, and kept on a rolling, and the man was out there on the sidewalk, just like that. And this kind of stuff is still going on today, and the Bible is telling you, what it is and why it is and how it is. Amen. But it all begins with this. Every time we turn around, well, so-and-so, they had this bad upbringing. I'm not going to argue with that. But see, at the same time, no one wants to take personal responsibility for anything. Amen. It's the blame game. It was this. I was raised like that. I wasn't raised this way. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. I felt I was entitled to it, so I just went on and took it. The world's full of that. Amen. And our streets are too. Amen. Everybody's looking for an answer. I, look, God bless our leaders, our mayors, our commissioners, our governor, our whoever's in charge of whatever they're in charge of, and, and trying to make any efforts to mitigate 
or reduce the incidence of these things that we're talking about here. But I'm going to tell you, the simple truth is this. It gets back to the school of first instruction. Amen. It gets back into the homes where parents have got to take the time and do what the Bible says. You can't improve on the Bible. Amen. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child. When they get to be 50, it's a little late. But when they're a child, you know, Amen. you all been to the parking lots where they plant new trees and you see that stick down there and they wrap that little, you know, twine around that Amen. stick to make that tree grow straight. That's what you got to do to your kids. Amen. It's called the rod of correction. And that rod can help them grow straight. Otherwise, they grow crooked. Amen. And they lean one way or another rather than stand upright, erect, and straight. Amen. It's an amazing thing, but when the human posture is in its appropriate erect stance, it's basically able to perceive almost everything. When you bend over or lean in one way or the other, something gets out of view. Amen. Or your view becomes skewed or obscured. Amen. Man, we're so politically deep now, it's a shame. And I, I haven't asked this question in a while. And some people may have got offended with me when I asked it because they didn't know where I was coming from. I'm, I'm never going to, listen, I'm going to let you know where I'm coming from. Glory I'm going to let you know where I'm coming from. I don't care whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or whether you're an independent or a gloomocrat. I don't care. What I care about no, no, I want to know what my question to you is. Are you more of either of those than you are a citizen of the kingdom of God? That's the question God gave me to ask his people. In other words, let me break it down. Are you more of a Democrat than you are a citizen of God's kingdom? Are you more of a Republican than you are a citizen of God's kingdom? Are you more of whatever it is you fly the banner of than the banner that hangs over you, Jehovah Nissi? Come on, amen. How much more loyal are you to your social and cultural position than you are to the culture of the kingdom? Amen. And this offended some folks. Because everybody wants to hear me say what they want to hear me say. And I remember teaching right straight out of the Bible what God says about how you handle anybody in this world, Amen. especially leaders, Amen. no matter whether you like them or you don't. I want you to know this, and I'm going to hit you with this, and I'm going to get ready to run in a couple minutes. <laughs> Galatians 6, 17. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You have to understand something. I told you that God deals with nations, Amen. and he's dealing with this one. Amen. And if you can't see it, you can't perceive the kingdom of God. Glory I can God. clearly see God yeah. is dealing with the nation of the United States of America. Amen. He's dealing with all the nations of Amen. the world, but he's dealing with us too. Yeah. We're not just perfect. We're, we don't have it all together. Yes, historical fact, right. we've, this country has sent out more missionaries in the more countries in the world over time than almost any other country in human history. But that doesn't altogether seal the deal. What we're doing in the sight of God is abominable. And he knows it. And we know it. And we're here scrapping as to whether or not how many genders we can come up with. We're scrapping with who wants them be, to be called by this pronoun and that pronoun. We're firing good teachers, instructors, and administrators who say, wait a minute, I'm not going to affirm you in a lie. I'm not going to affirm you in error. I'm not going to affirm you in confusion Amen. because that stuff is confusion and God is not the author of confusion. And parents and grandparents, you have to teach your children and train them what Amen. the difference between confusion and order is. Amen. Because if all they get to listen to is their friends and their peers try to tell them, then you're going to have, you go, listen, one day you're going to come home to your house and your daughter, your son is going to come in and say, I'm not your son anymore. I'm your daughter. I'm not your daughter anymore. I'm your son. They're going to walk right into that door and say, don't call me she anymore. I'm he. Don't call me he anymore. I'm she. And by the way, I demand 
that you get me a, a sex change operation. You see, here, here's the problem. Y'all sitting out there, and you know, listen, I, I, I'm wide open, ladies and gentlemen. I, like I told you, I'm going to come from the Word of God. I don't care what color you are. See, see, listen, our different ethnic groups tend to feel the other ethnic groups are prolific to one thing or the other. But this thing, man, the devil doesn't care about y'all. God is no respecter of persons, and the devil has no respect for persons. Amen. So he don't care what color you are. Right. He doesn't care where you came from. He doesn't care how old you are. He will pervert you Amen. That's right. and get you to buying into the philosophy. My, my. I have also diligently trained our congregation. Listen, don't go bashing people because you don't believe their, uh, whatever their theocracy or, or rather their theology is, especially when it's off That's right. and it doesn't line up with God's word. There are a lot of people like that out there. And you know what? You can't, listen, Paul warned you, you can't leave the world altogether. You got to work with these folks. Amen. Some of y'all working right there with them. You've been working with them for years. Amen. And all of a sudden they change. You say, man, what's wrong with you? My God. Some of them are your relatives. Amen. They come home and say, guess what? This is what the deal is now. My God. Well, you know what? You're going to still feed them, That's right. clothe them, That's love them, right. care for them. Amen. This, that, and the other. Oh, the only thing I can tell you is this. What I have discovered is this. They're on a pathway. Right. See, the devil, he, his whole game was to set humanity right. on a pathway to self-destruction. Now, that's a deep and profound statement, ladies and gentlemen. It's simple Amen. but profound. But this is what his game and goal is. Amen. Why? Here's the bottom line and the reason why you can't be a racist. Because all men are created in the image of God right. and after his likeness. Amen. For you right. to practice racism, for you to be a racist, and by the way, racism and being a racist can go in any combination of the five major That's ethnic right. groups on the earth. Amen. That's right. It can go from yellow to red, right. red to black, right. white to black, Come on. black to whatever. Every, you got those five major ethnic groups, black, white, red, yellow, and brown. Pr listen to me, racial prejudice, racism, and the practice of it can go in either one or any combination of those ways depending on your favorite flavor of the day Amen. Come on. or who aggravates you the most. Right. And then you start making value statements. Well, all of them are like that. You stereotypify people. But you, let me tell you what God's perspective of all of us is. Are you ready for this? Because this is the Bible. I'm not coming from the punditry you listen to on TV or the radio. I'm coming from the word of the living God. He is no, I perceive of a truth, Peter said, that God is no respecter of persons. Here's God's perspective, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. That's God's perspective, whether you know it or not. Amen. That's Amen. God's posture. When you get up there to heaven and you're at the judgment seat, my Bible tells me he's going to separate sheep from goats. Right. He didn't say whether they were blind, Amen. brunettes, or what. Amen. But he will be separating sheep from goats. Oh, those are God. figurative terms, meaning that the sheep yeah. are those that hear his voice and a stranger they will not follow. Amen. The goats are always butting and this and that and biting and, hey, that's, he gonna take, the Bible says he's going to take every nation, yeah. every kindred, yeah. and every tongue and subdivide them into two groups. Amen. This Bible still says, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. He that believeth Amen. and is baptized shall be saved. He that yeah. believeth not shall be damned. That's Glory. it. Here y'all down here trying to put six or seven genders on this thing. Let me tell you something. When we fly internationally, they give us these little, uh, what do you call it, the custom card, you know, when we got to get in and out of different airports, different countries, they still got men and women on them. They got male and female. They don't want any confusion. They're not going to be wanting to guess what you are when they catch up with you for some violation. You might as well say amen. The devil and the fool, he makes fools. And that's what he's trying to do right now. Amen. And again, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, you better watch out because one of, the greatest, one of the greatest deceptions and delusions 
I, I want to say you're going to witness. No, no, I'm going to tell you, you are witnessing right now. Is all of this foolishness and nonsense based on gender, race, ethnicity, and there's, there's, listen, there's a host of other things that's going on. To subdivide us, you see, the devil is still doing the same basic thing I've taught you all for years. Ladies and gentlemen, that devil is out there trying to get half of the world to believe he's not real. And on the other side of him, he's trying to keep the other half from meeting him. That's what he's doing. And I said to you before, he, his ultimate goal is to set our path upon a path of self-destruction. He didn't even so much as dare to grab the forbidden fruit and hand it off. He convinced the woman to grab it. And then, of course, get her to share it with her husband, who knew full well it was a clear violation of God's word. And so together, excuse me, the devil convinced them to set into motion the ultimate self-destruction of the human race. Amen. But God, of course, foreknowing all of it, had a plan, bef listen, before. Everybody say before. Before the foundation of the world to provide redemption and salvation for all of humanity in spite of the greatest error ever made. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to That's why the Bible says it is in him, him alone, that we live and move and have our being. Amen. I could only give you all a little bit of a little thumbnail scratch on this topic today, but I hope you will take it seriously to heart. And, and listen, I hope that you will also go back and meditate over these several verses in Proverbs chapter 1, because this is the only way, my brothers and sisters, you're going to be able to navigate through all the twists and the turns of perversion, abomination, Amen. damnation that is actually operating in the world today. The bat Listen to these people talking. The battle, I've told you years in advance, is for the truth now, ladies and gentlemen, Amen. because they are turning the truth of God into a lie. They're trying to get you to buy in it. As, see, as long as they can keep saying it. That's why they want your little toddler kids to get it. They want to train them that they're gender fluid Amen. at this age. That's right. That's right. Why? They're conditioning them to accept a lie. But remember the stock tip, Proverbs 23, and I close with this. It didn't say buy a lie. It said buy the truth right. and sell it not. Right. But you see what they're doing? You got these demonic stockbrokers out here now. I'm not talking about the Robinson Humphrey people or your favorite stockbroker. I'm not talking about E.F. Hutton and all these other guys. I'm talking about these demonic stockbrokers that are attempting to get you to sell out the truth, yeah. to sell out godly wisdom yeah. Yeah. for something that is a fake, Amen. for something that will set your life and the lives of your loved ones on a course of self-destruction. Prophets will be coming forth in the seasons ahead shortly to come who will not operate out of a compromising spirit, who will not accept the status quo of the, the dictates of this world, who will not buy into the lies that are being sold to people, but they will do just as the prophets of old, like Isaiah and Jeremiah Amen. and those guys, and they will tell Amen. the truth. Glory. Glory. They will tell the truth, cry Amen. aloud, and spare not, Amen. not even at the risk of their own life or their own limb or their own reputation or whatever, because somebody's got to tell it. Come on. And that's why I'm telling you now, you can't coddle a demon. That's right. You can't counsel a spirit out. Amen. It must be cast out, Amen. thrown out. Yeah. And see, the world is so conditioned, people, today, that anytime you use the word cast or thrown, especially in the context of things I'm talking about, oh, that sounds so violent. Yeah, but the Bible said that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. What the problem is with you is you can't discern physical violence yeah. from spiritual violence. Yeah. And God's not talking about physical violence. Amen. He's talking about spiritual violence. Amen. You can blow a thousand yeah. soldiers up into bits and pieces. Yeah. 
but the same demons that were in them will simply rise up from the rubble and go possess somebody else. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We need the godly kind of weapons to pull down the strongholds of the spirit. Knives and bombs and guns won't do it. You need the power of the word, the power of the gospel, the anointing of the most high God to dispossess spirits. Psychology won't get it done. Social science won't get it done. Amen. Jesus said these signs yeah. will get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Who believe, That's right. they shall cast out devils. Yeah. They shall speak with new tongues. New tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Hallelujah. You're talking about supernatural power. Amen. Amen. If you could combine all the nuclear power plants in the world and harness them That's right. into one flow, they don't have the power to separate a demon from a person. I don't care how many atoms you split. The demons are made of atoms. I better leave it there. Praise God. Well, folks, we're doing business in deep waters here. That's why we're talking about practical wisdom for profound times such as the ones we're living in. And we need to know and we need to understand these things. Do not let Jesus, I keep going back to these same two simple instructions that Jesus gave to help us navigate our way through the times. Number one, he said, see that no man deceive you. And number two, he said, see that you be not troubled. Don't grow anxious. Don't grow fearful. Move toward God. If any man lack wisdom, as we discovered here in James 1 today, let him ask of God who giveth liberally unto all men and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Amen. There you go. It can't get more simple than that. Praise God. Well, whoever you are, wherever you are, I want you to come with us now as we go boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because where all of this begins, the beginning, it says right here, the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Come into relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and you will find yourself on the pathway to knowledge and wisdom and equity and justice, the subtlety that the book of Proverbs says can be provided so that God's citizens can truly be productive and glorify him in any given uh, arena or set of circumstances. So right now, I'm going to ask you to follow me in this simple prayer and say, Dear God, I come to you realizing that in my life I have sinned and come short of your glory. I repent of all of my sin, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on the cross and shed his blood, to save me from all of my sin is the Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I might be justified, just as if I had never sinned. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and live in me now. I believe that I receive eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, that I am now made a new creation in Christ Jesus, born again of the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Congratulations if you prayed that prayer with us today. I want to officially welcome you into the family of God and declare to you that you have become officially a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And this is important. You may not understand all there is to know about all of these things, but you know what? Remember when you first started learning to drive, all you want to do was get in there, turn it on, and go. You didn't know what was under the hood. You didn't know how, what, how many pounds of, what is it, pounds per square inch of air pressure you put in the tires. You weren't thinking about oil changes, lube jobs, or any of that stuff. You just wanted to get from point A to point B. And you learned enough to get started on the road. Because once you knew how to drive from point A to point B, well, you could drive your automobile from your home to the uh, maintenance shop to get all those other mechanical things you may not necessarily understand done. And that's what the church's purpose is also. We thank God by the grace of God help a lot of people come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. But there's other practical things. Yes, there's kind of a maintenance program, if you will. Jesus said it this way, if you continue in my word, 
Then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's that continuity. It's that going on down the road where you'll, low, pardon me, where you'll learn and grow and develop and mature. And I tell you what, your life will be a, a blessing on its way somewhere to happen.